tonight. I'm here at the Whore Bar in El Paso, Texas, and it brings me great, great pleasure to welcome a legendary metal drummer, and I have with me the man, Mr. Paul Bostoff of Exodus. How are you doing, Paul? You know, it's funny when you said that. I almost expected you to say Slayer. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I am in Exodus, huh? And, you know, uh, I guess that's where we'll start off, Paul. There's so much to talk about with you, man. And um, first of all, let me just say thank you for your time and effort uh, in doing this because um, you are legendary and people out there respect uh, your musicianship and your hard work and, and what you've accomplished in your career. Um, and now I think many fans were pleasantly surprised to see you uh, as the drummer for Exodus. Um, let's start there. How did it, how did that all happen? Well, let's see. Uh, as many gigs do, I got a phone call from their manager um, asking me if I'd be interested in in playing, in, you know, in, in doing the record with the band first of all. And then they kind of filled me in on what was going on with Tom, and I. I, I really like Tom and have immense respect for him as a thrash drummer. I think he's one of the most underrated thrash drummers of all time. Um, so I lost set the record straight there with, with that. Um, and you know, basically, I got, got a demo. I, would call, I talked to Gary. You know, me and Gary have always been cool, been friends, and uh, I got they had a five-song demo. So I listened to the five-song demo. I uh, picked it up from the manager's house, and drove home with it in the car, and uh, I liked the song so much. I was just like, you know, I called Gary up and I'm in. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll join up, you know, because I, I, I really, when I heard the songs, I was like, you know, this is right up my alley. And I stepped into the rehearsal studio the first day. Gary just told me, look, he goes, do whatever you want to do on the drums. And I was like, cool, because I just wanted to put double bass all over the whole album, right? which happened. Cool. So. And, and let's go ahead and talk about um, the new Exodus record. It just dropped yesterday yeah. on the 4th of October, Shovel Headed Kill Machine, San Antonio. Uh, hear it and remember it and go out there and buy it. Um, let's talk about this record. I think a lot of people, because most notably, I mean, and most visibly, and in, in, in whenever there's a transition in the vocal slot, I mean, people are a lot of always kind of hesitant and scared of what's going to happen next with this band. But all I keep hearing is that this new Exodus record kind of blows Temple of the Damned away. And I was a huge fan of Temple of the Damned. Give us your, your take on the new Exodus record and how do you compare it maybe to Tempo? Um, what separates it from Tempo? Well, what separates it from Tempo, I think, is, um, you know, Tempo's an album that that band, that Exodus had put together after being apart for X amount of years, you know, a long time. And they, they got back together, started doing shows, and that, that in itself and the fact, you know, when, you, when you're away from recording an album and touring and you know, you're going to come back, and I think there's some ama amazing music on tempo. Um, but, you know, this, you know after, anytime a band goes on the road and they come back and they record another record, your music's going to be way more intense and more focused because you have an idea of what works with the fans and what doesn't work with the fans, um, and what you like and what you don't like about the record. Um, you always get a chance to go out, and like on tempo, they had a chance to find out. I wasn't with them, of course, but to find out what songs were really, you know, the fans were getting off on what kind of grooves they're digging. And so I think this record uh, was, you know, the mastermind of Gary Holt. And he was pretty much more in tune and in touch with what's, you know, what's happening. And, and most, for the most part, I think the last record Exodus did, which I, like I said, it's a great record. Uh, this record, Gary wanted to come out with something that was, was brutal and singer. Uh, Rob, Rob Dukes, his appro vocal approach is so much different than Zetro's because Rob is way more way more aggressive you know such was more of like a bon scott style singer mm -hmm. but 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 rob is just like you know he's like the guy sitting outside your window with a knife you know <laughs> waiting to hop in and slice your throat in the middle of the night you know it's like that's what kind of vocal style he brings to the band you know if you add that and you know the style of drums that i like to play and it's a, it's this is and the fact that we only had three weeks to rehearse for the thing i did wow. so the, the approach to the record is, is a much more, uh, it's a more brutal approach. It, you know, it's not, you know, there's a lot of technical stuff on the record, but it, this is a very primal record. As you guys to are already out on the road um, supporting uh, the CD and obviously playing the new songs live. I know for this tour, this is only the second date of, am I correct, is this the second date of this tour? Uh, it's the this leg third, of the tour? Official, third official okay. date. We did two warm-up dates. What, what's been the reception thus far um, to fan, Exodus fans who are hearing the <laughs> live now? Man, you know, the trippy thing is, is 
You know, anytime you play something really fast for people that they haven't heard before, they spend more time listening to it than they do thrashing it. You know, thr thrashing to it. But um, for the most part, right now, um, the reaction to the new material. Uh, it, I think some people, uh, their jaws are on the floor because yeah. they, cause they come, they're coming to the show expecting, you know, what Exodus was, and we're still, still playing the old material. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it's not. It's, it's this. Uh, uh, you know, I'm in the band, so this may sound biased, but uh, it's it's you know it's a, it's a supercharged Exodus. It, it, now. As it's, you it's mentioned, different. drugs. Um, I think also not only elements that have been added to the band, but maybe some of the bad elements that have been taken out. I remember I interviewed Gary last year and. He says, Rob, you know, I've kind of cleaned up my act. I'm not I'm a little bit more sober now. And, and of course, um, you know, it's no secret that people know about some of the troubles that Rick Huno, uh, was facing. And now he's out. So it seems like um, Exodus is now this mean, green running machine now, stronger, tighter, um, cleaner, and uh, moving forward stronger now, I would say. Uh, I'd say you're right. Um, you know, I, I, in terms of the, you know, the, the band's past drug problems you know I, I don't I, if that if those elements would have existed I don't think I probably would have hopped on board um, for an yeah. entire tour talk a little bit you mentioned that you guys are gonna go uh, across the pond into Europe uh, can you maybe share about maybe who you're thinking about taking on the road with you will you guys be supporting will you be headlining uh, what's the, what, what does it look like for 06 coming up uh, tour wise 06 uh, well Europe so five still okay so um, we're supposed to hook up with hypocrisy oh. over there um, we're going to be doing, we're, we're going to start out there doing headlining stuff, um, and I have no idea who's opening up for us when we do the headlining sh shows yet. I know we have some, uh, I know we have some, uh, inter some international acts opening up for us. I don't know who they are yet. You know, I'm still, I'm still trying to get it together here in the States <laughs> right now. But I know we're doing something with hypocrisy for about two weeks over there. Um, and then uh, com coming back home, we're going to take the month of January off. Um, our, one of our guitar players, Lee, his wife's having a baby, so he wants to be home for that, and everybody's cool with that. So um, then, you know, uh, February, it depends on what comes up. February, we'll probably do Australia, New Zealand, Japan, and there's still South America. Um, we're trying to hope, hopefully hook up with, uh, with a, uh, a, a larger band, excuse me, a uh, larger band um, and support, you know, somebody. So. Uh, Everybody get on the Slayer message cool, board man. and tell them they want Exodus to go out with them. <laughs> call, call Tom, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I, actually, I called Kerry. Okay. We're, I, we're still friends, and yeah, cool. I, I told him I'm gonna send him a record. Cool. And, you know, you know it, I know that'd be kind of weird for all for all of us, but uh, um, yeah, it'd be, it'd finally, be a lot Paul, of fun. Um, I have to ask. Um, you know, you've had a, a long career, and you're still going. Um, you've accomplished a lot. You've played with some very high caliber musicians and been um, recorded on some very historical uh, records. When the day comes that it's all done for Paul Bostoff, what do you want your legacy to be? How do you want people to remember Paul Bostoff? You're going to make me cry. No, I'm kidding. Um, how, would I, how would I like people to remember me? Yeah. Um, I Shoot, I, you know, I'd like people to remember me as uh, somebody who always gave 100 percent you know I try to every time I go out on stage um, it, you know, that's a hard question to an to answer because I don't put too much thought into how I'd like to be remembered you know it's like I think I think for me it's more of uh, if I've made people happy with the way I play if people get something out of it if it if it makes a, if it gets, if it makes a day better for somebody, if they put a record on and it just gives them goosebumps or makes them want to like, climb, you know, jump over a six-foot wall because they got so much energy, then then what I, then I've achieved everything. The I new Exodus to. is already out on the streets. Go pick it up. It's called Shovel Headed Kill Machine. You're watching Rob's Metalworks.